Google Classroom is probably one of the most popular and in my opinion, uh, the easiest uh, learning management system out there for teachers to use with students. It's just a great spot to make your classroom digital and basically like a hub for anything that you need to share with students and even with parents. Uh, so we're going to create one from scratch right away by hopping over to the waffle here and finding the classroom icon. And you're going to see as soon as this opens up that I'm not going to have any classrooms here. Uh, but as teachers, we can do one of two things. If I go over to this plus sign, we could either join a class that's already created so we could actually see what it looks like and feels like to be a student in a classroom uh, or we're going to create a class. So for this video here, we're going to create a class. And we're just going to answer a few questions and fill in some blanks here. So we're going to create a class name. We're going to call this one Tech Classroom with Frank. And we're not going to worry about the other three spots right now. We're just going to go ahead and create. Once it's created, the classroom is just going to sit right here. And that's how we can access it. So I'm going to go ahead and click on that. Now, we need to actually populate this classroom with students. Like there's a lot of different things we can do. We can customize the banner here. I know a lot of people like to use Bitmoji classrooms, which is great, uh, but we're going to dive right in. To add students to the classroom, we can do this multiple ways. Uh, the first way with the students in front of us, we could actually ask them to access Google Classroom. And with the plus sign to join a class, they could actually just type in this course code. And the course code is unique for your particular classroom. You're also going to notice here that we can also copy an invite link and we can email it to all of our students. Or another way we could do it, almost just like some um, like preemptive work that we can do with the students is we can actually just go over to people and start adding the students on our own. So you'll see a section just for students and like a little plus sign here. So once I click on that, we can actually enter students' names. Uh, it should be linked to your uh, district's um, student information system and you can access the student names that way. You'll also notice right at the top above that is a section for teachers. So there's my name there, and we could actually add multiple teachers to the same classroom. So if you have specialty teachers that come in and provide you prep, they can share the same classroom space with you. So that way it's just one-stop shopping for students. Um, so lots of different ways that you can, that you can populate with uh, students and other teachers. To add, start adding some messages and some work, if we go back to our stream here, you can see there's a section where we can actually announce something to the class. So if I go ahead and click on that, it's gonna be sent to all students and we can type something directly in here. Another thing you're also gonna notice in this uh, messaging box, we also have different ways that we can format our messaging or we could also include an audio recording. So using moat and you can actually add little moat voice messages within uh, Google Classroom itself. And we'll, I'll show you some other spots there uh, to learn more about how to use Moat because it's a great uh, audio recording uh, extension that you can add. You can go ahead and look at my video on how to download and use Moat. You can also see down here, we can add various attachments from our computer to a website, to a YouTube video, or even your Google Drive. So we can go ahead and just type in, welcome to our classroom, I hope you're ready for learning today. And we can go ahead and post that and every student will go ahead and see that. And you'll notice that even there's a comment section so students can leave little comments if they like. And again, there's another section for Moat. To add assignments, we're gonna hop over to classwork and you will see a big blue button that says to create. And we can create a variety of things like uh, an assignment, we can assign a quiz, uh, just various questions or just course material, whatever we need. We could even reuse a post from a past classroom or one that's already in this classroom here. And we could also arrange our posts by certain topics. So some people like to post, um, like to, to sort their messages and assignments by weeks, or some people like to do it by subject, completely up to you how you want to do that. So we're going to go ahead and click assignment. And we can see in this window that we can start adding some materials. So for here, we're going to do just call it assignment one. We'll call it writing. Here we can add some more instructions, much like how we did the message at the beginning with the in the stream. Again, you can include some moat messages as well. 
Down at the bottom, we can put in some attachments. So if we want them to watch a YouTube video, we can do that. If we want to create something from scratch, whether it be from a brand new Google Docs, Google Slides, et cetera, we can add that as well. We can upload something from our computer or a link to a website if we want the students to refer to that. The important thing to know is when we add something from our Google Drive, if you already have something pre-made, there's something that uh, we need to make sure of. And I'm gonna go ahead and click on this now. And you will see that we can actually access all of our files from our drive. So these are just my recent ones, but we can upload something new. We can go right into our drive and look at our folders or some areas that are start. So for this one, I'm actually gonna double click on this that says assignment one. And then you're gonna notice that we're, we actually have a little drop down menu here. So I'm gonna click on that. And we're gonna see three options. We can actually make this Google Docs just a document that students can view only. So maybe there's just instructions or something to read. Students can edit the file. And this is what's important is that if we say students can edit the file, that means all the students can edit the exact same file. Um, so maybe we want that collaborating happening within the classroom. So that's something to keep make aware. Um, or finally, uh, my personal favorite, the one I use most often is make a copy for each student. So that means every student's getting their own individual document Maybe there's different questions on there and we want the students to complete that assignment on their own. So that's something important to think about. So if we look over on the right hand side, we could actually post this to multiple classrooms. We only have one, so it's just going to stick to our tech classroom here. We can assign it to all students or if I go ahead and click on that, we don't have any students here, but we could potentially only assign this to certain students. So maybe you have a split grade and you only want uh, Let's say you have a three, four split grade, and maybe you only want the grade threes to, to complete this, so you only click the grade three students. And then the grade fours don't have to do this one, maybe they'll do something different. Or maybe you have students on IEPs, and this is a, um, an accommodated version of the same assignment for the whole class, and you only want those certain students to do that. You can assign points if you want as well. There is a grade book attached to Google Classroom as well. If I go ahead and click on that, we could also make this ungraded. We can include a due date. So for today's example, I'm going to make this due next week. And we can even put a time, but I'm not going to worry about that right now. And going back to that topic idea, maybe we want to assign this in a different uh, category so we can create something new. As this is a writing assignment, I'll just call this topic writing. And then we can go ahead and assign. And we could do one of two, one of multiple options here. We can assign it right away. We can actually schedule it for a certain time. So maybe you're doing this on a Friday, but you want this posted on Monday morning. You could do that as well. Or maybe you're just kind of half done and you want to add some more instructions later. Lots of different options that we can do here. For today, we're just going to directly assign. Okay. And now that we can see that it's assigned, we can see a couple of things. Now we have a topic just for writing and then that writing assignment is below. If I go ahead and click on that, we can actually see the document that's there. Any information that would have been attached um, would have been posted here as well. Uh, we can also see that there's two numbers here. One is how many students have completed and turned it in and how many students that this was assigned to. So since we don't have any students in this classroom, both are set to zero, but it's a great way to track um, how students are doing and how they're progressing. Two other items I want to make note here um, is that we you can actually see two other links at the top. We have one that's for Google Calendar and one is for our class drive folder. So I'm going to talk about the class drive folder first. So in your Google Drive, as you are creating Google Classrooms, there is a folder dedicated just to classrooms. So I'm going to go over to my Google Drive now. And you can see that in my drive, I opened a folder called classroom. And within that folder is a shared folder dedicated to uh, this particular Google classroom. And it's shared with the students that are in the classroom. So if I go ahead and double click on that, we can actually see it's uh, designed with two other folders, one for templates that we don't need to worry about right now because I didn't really create any, but one for the assignment that I created. So if I go ahead and open that right now, it's empty. And that's only because I don't have any students. Uh, in my classroom, but if I did and they started opening those Google Docs, their individual Google Docs, this folder would populate with all of their assignments. Uh, so that's one of many ways that we can actually track what they're doing. The other link we talked about, uh, Google Calendar. 
if you have ever been to your Google Calendar, you could access it with your waffle as well. You can see mine right at the top. I'm going to go ahead and access that. And we can see that in the month of December, we don't have a lot going on, but there is a link right here to an assignment. If I go ahead and click on that, this is actually the assignment that I just created within my classroom. So for those students that uh, need a digital calendar to kind of keep track of their work, keep track of what they're doing, they can go ahead and access it this way. And if I click on this link here, it will bring us directly to that assignment within our Google Classroom. So the students can uh, start working on that from there. So back at Classwork, I'm just going to show one more example of assignment. I'm going to go ahead and create this one. And you can see that we could actually create a quiz assignment. You can see a blank forms quiz has been created for us here. We can edit that in a minute. But I'm going to go ahead and create a title. So let's call this quiz one. And we can include instructions. And much like before, we can create a point value if we wish, but we still have to create the quiz itself. And we can also set up a due date. So maybe we have this posted on the Monday and we want it due on the Thursday. So the students have roughly a week to complete it. And then once I click on this button here, we can start editing the quiz. Um, so I won't go into how to create this quiz. If you go ahead and look at this video here, if you are interested in seeing how you can create a, a quiz through Google Forms that can also mark itself. So, and all of those marks do get included in the grade book in Google Classroom. So I'm gonna go ahead and assign that. And we could also see here, if I go back to our Google Classroom, that that quiz has also been added to my calendar. And that is it. And that is just a quick little intro on how to create your own very own Google Classroom and how to add a couple of pieces in there for your students.